What kind of future is currently on offer for today's children and young people? How could the current global offer be improved? The Commonwealth is a home to a third of the world's population. The prestigious annual lecture for 2015 was headlined by the former Prime Minister of New Zealand, who is currently the Administrator for the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP. The crux of the moment is youth innovation and sustainable development, the Commonwealth in a post-2015 world. It is estimated that three out of every five Commonwealth citizens are around or under the age of 30, many of whom are excluded from opportunities that could improve their lives. In some regions, conflict and insecurity has become a sector of sorts, deploying restive youths. A failure to invest in opportunity for youth can quickly lead to alienation and to energy turn to destruction rather than construction. That is the future we invite at our peril. We are living in very turbulent times where volatility has become the new normal. All of these are huge priorities for young people because young people are disproportionately counted among the unemployed. They often lack access to the quality and affordable education they need and to other services and they're often excluded from any meaningful participation in this decision-making which is impacting on their lives. 2015 marks the watershed as the Millennium Development Goals runs its course while a new development agenda kicks off post-2015. The Sustainable Development Goals, SDPs, proposes 17 goals and 169 targets framed around dignity, people, prosperity, partnerships, justice and the planet. So, does this agenda seem too big, too bold, too broad to be implemented? Well, frankly, yes, it often does. It will require a lot of vision and commitment. It will require funding. Such agendas are mere words on paper unless they can be implemented. We can take some encouragement from what has happened in the last 15 years but the magnitude of the challenge before us really is something which makes this century a make or break uh, a century. In an exclusive interview with Channels Television, Helen Clark speaks on Nigeria's security and development concerns. Parts of Nigeria can't develop while there's so much conflict. The young people uh, need livelihoods, they need opportunity. Uh, and where that opportunity isn't coming in the normal course, then they will be attracted to other things. A new global order of development is at hand. Once again, fresh targets will be rolled out. But certain goals are a lot easier than implementing them. Really, the question is this. When we develop labels and when we develop definitions of you know, things that are happening and economic conditions and you know, economic criteria, are we, who are we really talking about? Is anyone captured in the label? The call this time is for young people to be placed at the centre for their creativity to flourish. I believe if everybody is involved in this, like a partnership between the developing countries and the developed countries, it will be something that will create more enabling environment and infrastructures that are needed to um, encourage the youth to actually put what they have out there. And speaking of youth and development, over 200 Nigerian students assembled in the South Yorkshire city of Sheffield for the International Conference of Nigerian Students Icons. This is an annual event that facilitates networking, engagement and trading of ideas between student peers and professionals. It was great chatting with some of them about what it means to live and study abroad and how they have evolved. The two-hour journey to Sheffield from London was a good opportunity to catch my breath and prepare for the next assignment. A good scenery always jogs the mind and boosts inspiration. On arrival, it's a relief to find a warm weather as South Yorkshire is usually colder than London. And though it's spring, you can't be too sure of these things. Sheffield as a city is one of UK's events hub. From formal gatherings to music festivals, there's always something happening here. 
the Sheffield Hallam University played host to the 2015 International Conference of Nigerian Students Icons. The annual event is hosted by different schools around the UK. In the last eight, eight years, ninth year running, we've, we've actually helped and supported Nigerian students across different levels. So every year we hold a conference, we have up to 250 people come together from different parts of the, of the, of the UK and uh, we kind of run seminar workshops on very important issues that actually matter to students. Nigeria contributes about, I think, the highest or third highest contributor of international students in the UK. So the average international office of every UK university understands the importance of the Nigerian market. It's one thing to attract international students. However, support on arrival is a different ball game. On the issue of how much universities support foreign students. Most universities try as much as possible to support their international students. Obviously, the levels of support differ from one university to the other. I happen to have given a few seminars, and I'm quite surprised at the fact that most Nigerian students or African students don't even take advantage of the opportunities made available to them in their universities. So, on several levels, is, is that balance has to be right. Do they actually know that the support framework in place in these universities actually support them through things? The power of networking cannot be overemphasized. It's able to um, inspire young ones that um, they, they can actually give back to the to the Nigerian society, especially after their university education. We think it's crucial that when students are coming from any country, but in particular Nigeria, that they maximise their degree because some people just come for a certificate, and we believe that that's just the minimum of what you should leave with. The university experience is about interacting with people, engaging with others and developing yourself so that you can have the mindset and the skills and abilities to be an asset to the community and the nation. I've done a couple of projects. Um, I've seen guys start businesses, I've worked with them. Some of them have gone home, those businesses have grown. So the most striking thing is the platform um, that it gives people to network and the platform to develop themselves. There's a lot to be heard about people's personal experiences of living in the UK. Concerns vary from one individual to the next. Engaging with some students on several issues was very incisive. So as Nigerian students living abroad, studying abroad, some of you are working as well, what are the big issues for you? I think when I first came to the UK, the, 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 the problem I had was the weather. <laughs> I had to with the weather and then networking. I mean, when we come out, we know how to keep to ourselves a lot, we Nigerians, so we are not open. For me, I feel it's the, it's the picture, it's the image we have before we get here. You know, some of us came and, and the, the, the history we're getting is, you don't need to mix with Nigerians. We, we, I don't know how to put it. For me, I think it's a problem that has to do with us not being proud of our identity. Um, when I came here, it was actually my first um, time being in Europe. The first I looked out for was an African, and the next I looked out for was a Nigerian community. I so much desired to be part of the community. But surprisingly, the Nigerians I met wouldn't want to live with Nigerians in the, in the, in the same hostel. What was the reason? They just wouldn't want problem. They feel that uh, uh, um, com um, interacting or sharing or coming close to Nigerians could bring problems. Yeah. Because we changed yeah. that. Putting up activities that will keep us together. Taking up some issues about Nigeria, the bar of expectations has been set very high for the incoming administration. I'm hoping that things will turn out okay now that there's a new government, that they would focus on the youths, we the, we the new generations, that they will make something better for us. So I'm really hoping that I won't have to wait years to get a job. But there's an opportunity for us right now because there's a new change in government. The, the spirit of entrepreneurship is actually something that a lot of us are actually hoping to have. We don't tend to talk about the challenges we face as entrepreneurs, so it's actually a very huge issue. Are you looking at going into business? Are you looking at starting something? I have the dream of starting something. Not now, basically, you know trying as much as possible to raise capital. Yes, so I do hope to start something. I pray that we have a, gov a new government that will be supportive of people with good ideas. Because us being here, we've learned a lot. I have learned a lot, I've seen a, a lot of good things working here. I so much desire to have these things. Yeah, I so much desire to have these things working for us back home. And I, every, every passing day, I put up plans of what I will do if I go back home and I pray that we have, we have a new government that would be supportive of um, Nigerians who have uh, innovative sure ideas, yeah. 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 innovative ideas okay. that will move the country forward. forward. Yeah. 
So I'm okay, expecting a system that would support us to bring in the good things we've learned here, get them working back home for us.